Hello and welcome to Boston Globe Today, an in-depth look at the people and stories that impact our communities. I'm Shaguna Dulo, and here's a story making headlines across New England. What is happening at the St. Mary's Home for Children? The North Providence Police were called to the Psychiatric Residential Treatment Center more than 300 times in the past two years, mostly for runaways, some as young as eight years old. Reporter Amanda Milkovitz from our Rhode Island Bureau joined us with the latest developments. Amanda, 300 calls, more than 200 of them for runaways. What's going on at St. Mary's? Well, actually, that is a great question. And thank you so much for inviting me to be on. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, St. Mary's Home for Children uh, was actually established as an orphanage back in the 1800s and has evolved now as a nonprofit caring for children as young as eight who have developmental or behavioral issues. There's a psychiatric residential treatment facility for girls. Um, they do a lot of work with uh, children who have been ex sexually exploited or trafficked. But um, Despite all this work, they've discovered some major issues uh, going on at the home um, that actually began when a child overdosed back in April and has led to scrutiny by the Child Advocates Office and the Department of Children, Youth and Families. And they have uncovered abuse, neglect, trauma, chaos um, facilities where the executive director herself said she wouldn't let her own dog live there. I mean, it's it's just been completely extraordinary. So yes, th there are a lot of children running away from the home, and there's probably a lot of reasons why. Yes, these these things that were found were during an eight month state investigation, and in your story, you quote an administrator who said at a hearing that St. Mary's was a too big to fail situation. With these types of things going on, why was this the case? Well. And that's kind of the, the bigger issue when it comes to social services for children. Rhode Island does not have enough beds for children who need this type of care. And in fact, 72 Rhode Island children are currently in out-of-state placements, some as far away as Arkansas. And, you know, it's not a tenable situation. It isn't just that it's very expensive. It's that these children are very far away from their community. So St. Mary's has been seen as a place that could really serve that purpose. And in fact, the state is investing $11 million in ARPA money to build an expansion at the same time that St. Mary's is under investigation and the Department of Children, Youth and Families is not even sending children there. It offends most people's sensibilities when children are abused or treated badly. Here we have children who have been the victim of abuse. You sat down with the interim CEO. What did he tell you? So Charles Montorio Archer comes from a 30 year background involved in, in programs just like this. He was at One Hope United mm -hmm. in Chicago up until a few months ago. And he's one of the people who was recommended by our new uh, director of the Department of, of um, Children, Youth and Families as someone who could spearhead this. He's got a lot of work to do, and he admits that immediately. He admits that they are not even ready yet to take in children again. They need to do things like go a month without any safety violations. It seems like a pretty basic thing. They need to retrain their staff. They need to hire staff. They need to set up a program or a way of real communication between the administrators, the managers, and the staff where the staff feels like they are allowed to report any issues with um, what's going on at St. Mary's. And he's pretty open about it. He also believes it can be done. And in the interview with me, he cited a lot of the training programs that they're sending staff members to, but they're also really looking for staff members as well. And that's a bigger crisis that goes beyond St. Mary's, not having enough people to work in these, in these types of jobs. This is a story that we will be following very closely. Reporter Amanda Milkovitz from our Rhode Island Bureau, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And that's what's happening across New England. For story updates and breaking news, go to bostonglobe.com.